again and welcome to my series on patching the polycrow. So we've gotten pretty deep into our patch in terms of adding polyphony. We've added two parts of uh, make noise teleharmonics. We've added a bass part and we've added a counterpart voice that kind of follows but doesn't exactly track our original melody voice. I'm just going to put the melody voice on now. And I've made up a quick little change since our last video. I've now got the U scale quantizer set to a whole tone scale, starting on D flat, one of the two whole tone scales available. So we're going to hear a whole bunch of um, major thirds and augmented triads as we go. But I'm going to start to speed the whole thing up a little bit just to give a sense of what this can sound like if we start to push its limits a little bit. And I'm going to start with the melody. So if you remember from our earliest videos, Quadrax Channel 4 is our melody. And then if I start to bias it, So we've still got the same modulations. Now we're just running our rise and fall a little bit quicker so the whole thing will tend to cycle through and we can hear those modulating LFOs giving us those little fluttery sounds. And then over on the other side of the rack, I'm going to increase the bias on the VCA that drives that melody. So I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to make a quick change to our Polaris to its resonance setting. So if you may recall from our earlier videos, I'm using an inverted Krell envelope to reduce the resonance. So the resonance is high at the beginning and endings of the Krell envelope for the melody voice, and then start, it starts to tail off. So I'm reducing that effect, so we're going to hear more resonance. It's just going to make it a little bit noisy. I'm going to flick that voice off. And I'm going to bring in our bass voice. Our voice, bass voice is a Corel function generator running on Quadrax channel 1. I'm going to do the same thing with it. I'm going to speed it up. And of course, from our previous videos, you'll remember that the pitches that the bass voice grabs are derived from the sample and hole generator that is sampling the output of the quantizer for the melody voice. So because the melody voice is moving faster, that sample and hold is sampling more often and the bass voice is going to move faster as well. I'm going to snap that off. I'm going to bring up one of our harmony parts. So this should be channel 3 of the quadrax. I'm going to do the same thing. Speed it up. And then I'm going to switch over to our next harmony part, which is channel 2, and I'm going to speed it up on the quadrax. I'm going to add in the channel 3 
harmony part telharmonics voice just so we can hear the two of them and the interplay between them. Now remember that from our earlier videos, the scope is showing us the green trace from the counterpart voice and the red trace from the melody voice. And then let's go over to our counterpart voice. And we're just going to take a quick look at mass and we're going to speed it up. So now we're listening to the counterpart voice, and it is channel one of math. I'm going to do the same thing, I'm just going to bias it quicker. And I'll brighten the filter. I'll just brighten up the filter on the counterpart voice. I'll kick in the first harmony part. And I'll add in the second harmony part. And then I'll add in the bass part. Now we're listening to all nine parts of polyphony. Playing our krell relatively quickly. And next up, I'm just going to set up a quick patch in stereo so we can hear this in stereo. And as it's playing, I'm going to change the U scale from a whole tone um, to a dominant seven of some type and then resolve it to a major. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time around. <laughs>